Hello everybody, this is All Tree Productions and today I'm going to make an impromptu video regarding my opinions on the new Palm phone that was released just yesterday. So let's recall about 10 years ago where smartphones barely exceeded 3.5 inches and of course we know how the story ends. We've seen that now smartphones all rapidly increase in size in the following years and now most smartphones are of at least 6 inch size and above. And now there are even smartphones like the Mi Max 3 that are bordering on 7 inches that was once considered to be the size of a compact tablet. So TCL, they revived the Palm brand by licensing it to a San Francisco startup. And they have created the supposed antithesis to the big screen sizes of smartphones today. I don't have the Palm phone with me right now, but I can use the HTC Wi-Fi S from 2011 to give you perhaps a rough approximation on the size of this new Palm phone. It's about 3.3 inches screen size, and it's almost like a smartphone for your smartphone. Kind of like how Pucci is to Yoshi, is to Mario. Like the Yoshi right here. Very cute. When the concepts for this Palm phone came out in August, I thought it was going to be just vaporware, something that was going to be like forgotten in a few months' time and will never release to the public. Since how the concept to me just sounded very ridiculous, it sounds like no one would want to buy it, right? But at least it's now released and I can be... Well, I don't have much to talk about yet. I really don't have any words to say about this. But so, let's do a recap on what happened to Palm, the original company. So in the mid-2000s, Palm was making webOS handsets as well as Windows Mobile handsets. Uh, Web Palm OS was, was really rapidly aging and the com as Palm itself, they did not want to update it so they had to rely increasingly more and more on, of, on Windows Mobile handsets which unfortunately, they were caught cold by the iPhone mania that was sweeping the United States at that time and Palm never really had a good presence outside of the United States. So obviously, Palm was struggling quite badly but even then, they managed to get uh, X. Apple executive, I think his name was John Rubinstein, and together they created what would become known as Web OS. The OS that was so critically acclaimed for having gesture-based functionality that ironically even Android and iOS have copied almost a decade after it was released. Even though Web OS was quite well acclaimed, it did not save Palm primarily because Palm was really running out of cash to begin with, and they only had a second rate carrier deal with Sprint rather than Verizon, which they might have liked to begin with. So in 2010, Palm, they had to sell themselves to HP for, I think, about 1.2 billion US dollars. So HP, under Mark Hurt, they planned to expand on WebOS, double down on it, and at one point, they were even considering bringing WebOS to their printers and even computers. But it didn't happen in the end. So they did release a few new web devices, although it was under the HP name, like this Via, quite small, and the uh, P3, there was only sort of very limited release because after the P3 was released, the new CEO of HP, whose name I think pronounced it as Leo Apotheker, he decided to just stop development of WebOS completely because he thought it wasn't profitable. And with that, all of Palm's legacy were just discarded in the trash. But a few years later, under Matt Whitman, if I pronounce the name correctly, HP, they sold the rights to WebOS to LG, and LG currently uses WebOS for its smart TVs and WebOS there has been quite critically acclaimed for being one of the better smartphone, smart TV OSs ever implemented. Meanwhile, they sold the rights to the Palm brand to TCL, the company that produces Alcatel phones under license as well as more recently the BlackBerry phones like Key 1 and Key 2 under license from BlackBerry Inc. itself. So on 2015, Palm, Palm, oh, I mean TCL, they announced at CES that they are going to revive the Palm name and they even had set up a website called mypalm.com specifically for this purpose. They were talking about oh, how they're going to make Palm a Silicon Valley based startup again where you could crowdfund smartphones from them. But in the end, the concept didn't turn up at all. Maybe because TCL realized that this concept was never going to be financially viable in the first place. So in the end, TCL just set on the right to Palm for many for quite some time, about three years. So it may not so until perhaps last year, if I'm not wrong, two senior San Francisco X Design VPs they decided to create their own startup and create a tiny smartphone that will eventually become the Palm device as they know it. They approached TCL 
and in the, in the end, TCL decided to license them the Palm name, and that's how the new Palm phone came to be. They haven't even, even given it an explicit name yet, so we just refer to this phone as the Palm phone. And by the way, I don't think that it's very likely that this new Palm startup will ever create a web OS smartphone, even though I know that it's a, a very vocal audience that wants another web OS smartphone, because since all the rights to WebOS, if I'm not wrong, have gone to LG to use, and LG even then has never used it on smartphones, and I don't need to ever use it, given that how firstly, yes, Android smartphones are all struggling, like how the recent V40 is still not being seen as a viable competitor to Apple and Samsung, and, and we, as you all know, the uh, smartphone wars are basically gone, finished, over, and we, and we just only have iOS and Android left, all the other so-called third horses like Windows Phone, BlackBerry 10 and even Samsung's Tizen, they all have essentially been extinguished wiped off the map. So there's also one interesting thing about the new pop company and is that Stephen Curry, the so-called MVP of the NBA, is actually backing this phone up. So I find it a bit questionable and doubtful given that how is he was already promoting Apple and Vivo, the smartphone brand that made the Vivo Next the concept phone with the pop-up camera in China. So will we actually really be a serious invest use user of this new Palm phone or is it just another overhyped celebrity endorsement like Ellen DeGeneres and Gal Gadot when they were promoting Samsung and Huawei respectively but they were in and caught to still using iPhones by, by the very simple method of checking whether or not they are tweeting from Twitter for iPhone. But at least they can claim that he, has a, he was an investor and that he was talking stories about how old he had approached this company last year and he fell under the concept and decided to invest in money in and become a brand ambassador for the first time. I hope that it does pan well for him and that we don't end up with this embarrassing celebrity case where the celebrities actually don't use the food they are promoting. So the first thing is that this new Palm phone will be sold by a Verizon wireless, the largest career in the US and as a smartphone accessory meaning that you cannot just buy a and use it as a phone on its own. That's a problem. The problem is that the price for this new Palm phone is at 350 US dollars, which I think is far too expensive for a phone of this caliber. It needs to be below 150 US dollars to be viable to sell, perhaps as an impulsive buy to the person at the counter who might okay, maybe the salesman say, oh, hi sir, would you like to have a asset companion for the smartphone you are buying, maybe take this one less than $150, I guarantee that you like it, you enjoy it a lot as a sort of companion for your phone. Secondly, why did Palm TCL just not make the phone available to buy a la carte and make it usable on its own? I'm not sure why, maybe because of the nefarious carrier deals that come along with it, given that how notorious US carriers are in controlling smartphone OEMs, probably only second to the Japanese phone carriers that I think are probably more dominating than we got. So will we remain just an exclusive release in the US or not? It, to me, it looks like a very probable flop that will make this new startup go bust within a few months or so. Unless their second smartphone is something quite different, which I will be discussing later. So let's talk about the specs of this supposed new Palm phone. It's quite mixed to me in my opinion. 720p at 3.3 inches is a bit overkill for what the phone is supposed to do. I think that if using just WVGA resolution, as you can see on the Samsung Jet, technically I do know it's not a smartphone, but I think that at about 3.3 inches, WVGA resolution will still be sharp enough for most users anyway. It's quite good that they IP68 water resistant to the phone, which is quite unexpected for a phone of this price. And it may even make it good for a makeshift GoPro. Or maybe in the cases where you are afraid that you if, that even if your one thousand dollars mouthful is water resistant, you still don't want it to be drowned by by the water. And very unfortunate trend, but this new Palm phone it has no headphone jack and not even a memory card slot. And battery capacity is only eight hundred milliamp hours and it's not even removable. It's really is fact. I can't believe this. Even some basic feature phones like the this Nokia thirty three ten, the new one, they even have a much bigger battery capacity like this one, 12,000 mAh, you can see, you can see right over here, 50% larger than what this new startup could squeeze into the new Palm phone. And even this HTC Wi-Fi S, they still had a removable battery and can have a micro SD card slot at dimensions that are not too dissimilar to the Palm phone. 
just think it's just a very inefficient use of space in the first place. And he still has a headphone jack, seriously. Okay, then the biggest gripe I probably have with this new POM startup is that it doesn't really bring justice to what the POM name really represents to me, other than the fact that, oh, POM produces a few small phones like Pixie and Fear and maybe the Sand Show, and that's all really is to be related. In fact, I don't think they have hired most of the ex POM stuff that were working on WebOS and the original POM pilot and so on and so forth. It seems as though from the website that a lot of them are just your typical San Francisco hippie sort of youth. That's what I can really say. That, that's just contrast it to say HMD Global when they were reviving the, the Nokia brand. They make sure not only to just hire the staff from ex Nokia that were there at the time that Nokia they sold their phone division to Microsoft, but they even did go and revive some classic like the 3310 and now the 8110 4G that I reviewed a few months ago on this channel. And even Blackberry by TCL, they at least make phones that are based on the modern idea of what people might have about with old the, of, with the black barriers of, of old like the key one and key two even though they did make a few touch screens only steps like the motion so i do wish this new palm and divya well but i think it could, they should go for a different path to avoid getting reverse bust again first i think what they can do is to fill the gap left by the iphone se as well as the xperia compact series the iphone se was just discontinued a few months uh, in September, and they are now only being sold on the wild stock last basis. Whereas the Xperia Compact series, like this, they are quite hard to find, especially within the US. And and I also saw this mobile division is shrinking quite fast. For example, I think that currently in Singapore, they are really they quietly withdrew from the smartphone market. I have never heard of any plans from them to release the Xperia XZ3 here, even though it has been quite some time since it came to Japan, Taiwan, and Hong Kong. So maybe they could make a smartphone somewhere between 4 to 4.5 inches like the ones I have right over here where one-handed usability is still possible. So just give it maybe at least a 1020p display with micro SD expansion, two if not specs similar to say Moto G6, Xiaomi Redmi Note 5, all these things and so on and so forth. Given that I don't think a flagship smartphone that it has anywhere less than a 6 inch display is going to be ever going to be profitable for any company of all sorts. Of course, if they have the courage to do so and the funds to do so, why not? And it would be a very nice touch if they could call it the new beer or the new pixie, regardless of what it is. Second, they could also use some old palm name to bring the palm name truly justice as far as I'm talking about. Like say the trio and the three monikers. So I remember that the trio was basically a power user's dream and in, Android, in the Android world, it was last exemplified by phones like this Galaxy Note 4 and the LG V20, which is recording the show right now. Rugged, durable builds with all the tools and software features that power users could wish for. Unfortunately, that kind of phone is becoming extinct in the Android world. So I think that you could just pack in section specs, the best of TCL. I think TCL have some experience in doing flagship phones. And fan favorites like headphone jack and micro SD. And I think perhaps a OnePlus like price, and I think you have a potential pop hit right here, like what Xiaomi did with their Pocophone F1, packing most of the things that what power users want in an affordable price, and you should probably have a good hit on it. And as for regarding the pre, why not just bring back memories of WebOS by having a slide down factor in, a, in maybe somewhere around 4.5 inches, a la like this pre tree, and maybe the Blackberry pre, something like this. And now the Android point now has copied basically a lot of, of concepts from WebOS itself. I think it will be a very nice touch to this nostalgia factor. And how, you know, remember how WebOS designer, I think his name was du Duarte, if I'm not wrong, he actually jumped ship from WebOS to Android. So another poet where they touch and bring the cycle around full circle. And last but not least, I think that this might not be the most useful thing, but how about uh, energy level quality candy bar under the central moniker? I know that BlackBerry, they have done this to extend by increase, creating the key to LE, but I don't think it's a price low enough for people to maybe perhaps reconsider physical key keyboard smartphones again, even if they have a bit of nostalgia for such things. So perhaps they could, Pump could create a central device with the help of TCL who has gain enough experience from designing the new Bradbury key series of candy bar phones and just make it 
um, let's give you a spec of say the Moto G6 play on the Mi A29, A2 Lite, make it price less than 199 US dollars and give it some iPhone XR like colors, and I think that they will be good to go as well. So that's it for my recommendations, questions, and thoughts about this new Palm Fantasy San Francisco startup. I wish them good luck in this cutthroat business and smartphone industry where competitors they can rise rapidly and but they can also die very quickly, just like what happened to HTC, Nokia, the original one, and giants like Siemens and Ericsson. And if you do enjoy my content like this, do remember to like, comment, and subscribe to it, and hit the bell icon if you want to be alerted to every new video that I post. Last but but not least, I have something to show you. I have the A O eight POV right over here, and I'm going to make a throwback video about this. Perhaps the end of this week. I promise to upload this by the end of this week. So stay tuned and hit the bell icon to know when it will be coming out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.